Ku Klux Klan history, hidden facts. Secret societies have a significant role in the history of America. Some may have disappeared and some have developed under different names that can still be around these days. Good day everyone. Again, welcome to Abyss Media. I am Sam and today we will be talking about the hidden facts and history of Ku Klux Klan. Before we get started, I would really like to thank all of you who keep tuning in today. I also welcome those who are new here. On this channel, you would expect to know more about the research-based documentaries and history that possibly made a huge impact on the lives of the people. Also, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have concerns or some similar topics you want to discuss. We can even have that topic of yours in the future. Right now, we actually do some research about real-life scenarios that actually happened a long time ago, or perhaps even happening now. So without further ado, let's get started. Have you ever heard of the Ku Klux Klan? The Ku Klux Klan history started in 1865, at the end of the U.S. Civil War and was extended mostly into every southern state. In 1870, it became the vehicle for the white southern resistance to Republican Party's policies to establish economic and political equality for black Americans. Are you aware that the Ku Klux Klan was founded to repress the freedoms and rights of African Americans? It's a terrorist organization that used violence, intimidation, and even murder to keep white supremacy and social life. Do you find this interesting? Now let's go deeper and learn more about the Ku Klux Klan history and its hidden and unknown facts. So without further ado, let's get started. Ku Klux Klan, who are they? The Klan was the secret organization that used terror strategies and campaigns to target newly freed African Americans. It's an organization engaging fright and pursuing the white supremacist agenda. What's more frightening is that members of this organization are usually under the cloak of disguise and darkness. It's a group that includes former Confederate veterans who founded the first Ku Klux Klan branch in Tennessee. The first two words of this organization were supposedly derived from the Greek word Kiklos, which means circle. It was during Civil War's end that it brought liberty to the enslaved African Americans in the previous Confederacy. The federal laws introduced in the years of the Reconstruction were made to protect rights of freed African American people. Unfortunately, they encountered violence and intimidation from the Klan when they were about to exercise their rights. Here are some hidden facts about the Ku Klux Klan history. Now that you somehow know about the Ku Klux Klan, history seems like there's more to be revealed. Here's what you need to know. It's Pointed Hood. As you observed, the Ku Klux Klan wear a pointed hood and white robes, but where do you think they get these outfits called capirotes from? The truth is, the capirotes were being used in Old Spain by secret societies. The robes and hood are the ritual attires, and in some parts of Spain, they still wear them in celebration of the Holy Week. Can you imagine how these organizations that result in violence wear during holy days? Because of that, the Catholic Church became suspicious of such organizations, especially those that met secretly. And so, in the 14th century, Pope Clement VI reprimanded and imposed penalties on those who participated in the group. In turn, the members who accepted the hood or mass caperote used these attires to hide their identities. Indeed, the hooded clansman's image became so popular as a hate symbol displayed on tattoos and t-shirts by white supremacists worldwide. Various clans. For years, did you know that there were three different clans? In fact, three main ones encouraged many spin-off groups that used their names. It was in 1860s when the first Ku Klux Klan was launched as a social club. Later, it mutated into a group with a purpose. Another clan arose in 1915, and it happened during the Catholic and Jewish immigration. These groups added mass parades and cross burnings to the secret codes and white robes of the first group. And lastly, the third clan, whose members were giving exploitative talk shows and even hateful posts on social media to this day. These were the thing in the 1950s when the civil rights movement was firm on the agenda of Americans. Someone put a more corporate face on the Klan. If you know David Duke, you're probably puzzled by his rantings about Hillary Clinton, yet his real gift to Ku Klux Klan was to turn them into corporate. 
David Duke founded the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, where he and his followers were the ones responsible for innovations. He even tried to change the focus of the organization into legal and nonviolent. He wants to change the nation. However, he needs to quit in the 1980s and form the National Association for the Advancement of White People, Westboro Baptist Church. Did you know that the clans hate the Westboro Baptist Church as much as everyone else? Well, you probably think two of the world's famous hate groups have a lot in common. Turns out, the clan are not a big fan of people who picket soldiers' funerals. Now it makes sense that it's odd to think that white supremacists and hardcore fundamentalists throw urine at each other. It's just weird knowing the military history of the organization. Violence in the South one of the most radical aspects of Reconstruction is the black participation in public life. It was the black people who won the election to the southern state government, even the U.S. Congress. That said, Ku Klux Klan was able to dedicate itself coming up with an underground violence campaign against the Republican voters and leaders. These are both white and black in an effort to change the policies of Reconstruction. It would also restore the supremacy of white in the South. They were also joined in this issue by the same organizations like the White Brotherhood and Knights of the White Camellia. With that, about 10% of the black legislators elected in constitutional conventions, unfortunately, they became victims of violence, of which others were killed. Wrapping up, when the period of decline ended, the white protestant nativist groups renewed Ku Klux Klan in the 20th century. There were burning crosses and never-ending rallies and parades, as well as marches. With all these in mind, hopefully you will have a better understanding of the propaganda of this kind of organization, whether you see this as good or bad. What's important is it will not result in violence. So that's it for today's video. While people are still curious about the Ku Klux Klan's history, hopefully this video gave answers to know about them and their agenda. More than that, we are happy to announce that we run a few charity campaigns and our goal is to help those in need. You may check out the link in the descriptions and view our campaigns. And if you find this video interesting, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to let us know if you want to discuss interesting topics in the future, right in the comment section below.